Queen of the Moon. She <laughs> says, you just want to hug her and bring her home. You know. It was a great, great uh, occasion. We watched it. I didn't get up at 1.30 or No, neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> no, we said, we're going to be late. Late. No. Can I take a minute or two with you? Yes, sure. I don't want to screw up your schedule. No, we're fine. We're fine. Mike? How are you? James, how are you? Good to see you, Mike. Good to see you. Jim? How are you? I'm great. I think we were in Sydney. Oh, you, you know Joe. Oh, sure. It's more than I was sitting in the front. Boy, this is hot. This morning it was 55. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tomorrow we're off for the ranch. And I yeah, am delighted. That's going home. Does it stay fairly moderate there even mm -hmm. in the summer? Pretty good. Well, you know, California, yeah. it's, we're at 2,400 feet at the ranch there, so it's a dry heat. You don't have this humidity. We're going Saturday back to Palm Springs. It's going to be hot there, but. Uh, Czechoslovakia this year cut his tax from 90 to 20 percent. He's now in the 20 percent marginal tax bracket and he keeps 80 cents of every dollar he makes on the tour. And that's the only reason he didn't get back. We, we can make that. That's, that's the next uh, Reagan uh, tax guy. You mean we've got to create a new, a new special category for tennis players? <laughs> for competitive reasons? Oh, Don't let Ross do that. Oh, dear. In the, everybody in here because. In the. You've got a cap left on your camera to see how many check it. Right. <laughs> In the past several days, the Congress has acted with great wisdom and foresight in passing two bills that will help put us on the road to economic recovery. These bills, the Reconciliation Bill and the Tax Bill, are not yet here for signing, so we'll save that occasion for later. But before many of us leave Washington, I just wanted to ask all of these gentlemen down here for a brief, few brief moments together. In my view, the passage of this legislation marks the single most important achievement of the past 200 days. It represents the first serious step taken in decades to stop the growth of government, to end government's unwarranted intrusion into our lives, and to rebuild the foundations of our economy. Now, those of you who are here now are among the chief architects and the builders of these bills. And your political skills, your legislative talents, your insights, your hard work, are responsible for their success. And I don't think I have to elaborate on the remarkable role that each one of you has played in this. This can be safely left to history. But I would be remiss if I didn't say a few simply simple or totally inadequate but heartfelt words to each of you, and the words are, thank you. Thank you all. And they came not just from me, but from the American people. During the last 200 days, you provided your countrymen with an example of representative democracy at its best. 
Those of you in the Republican leadership in the face of extraordinary pressures have forged a political unity that has rarely been equaled in Washington. And you did it first and foremost because you believed you were acting in the best interests of the country. And those of you here today who are members of the Democratic Party had the personal strength to put principle above partisan or special interests, and yours has been a special courage. I think we can all agree that today our bipartisan coalition is becoming a strong and vibrant one. But I think we can also agree that we'll need this strength and vibrancy because the challenges we must face together are by no means over. The struggle against government's irresistible urge to grow and grow is a continuing one. The fight to control the federal budget is just beginning. But on this front, I think we can be very clear. There will be no falling back, no call for retreat. We've stood together. We fought together for what we believe was right. I know that we'll do so again, but today, I wanted you to know how grateful I am to you and how grateful the American people are for your selflessness and your statesmanship. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we got a lot of goodies. <laughs> sir, the, sir, the controllers are staying out and are being fired. What's next there? Well, we're up to about 75% of normal air traffic. Uh, and. Uh, there are still room for more to come back because the 20 for the 48 hours included until their shift. So there is an afternoon shift due in, there is a night shift and so forth. And uh, we'll see what the total is in. As I understand, it's up to about 38% now are back in. Are you disappointed that after your speech, uh, more didn't, what was your reaction when only about 33% were Well, I was sorry and I, and sorry for them. I think that these are fine people out there who've been misled and who don't quite understand that uh, our position has to be irreversible. There is a law and uh, an oath that they signed, and uh, I don't think any of them would hold still if any of us here who took an oath uh, decided that we didn't mean to keep that oath. As a, as, a union president, as a former union president, do you feel any pangs about firing people who strike for higher wages? Well, you bet. Anyone who went through the Great Depression thinks that's the worst thing in the world that can happen to anyone. And uh, I feel, I do feel badly. I certainly take no joy out of this. And I was hoping that uh, more of them would recognize the obligation they have. But uh, there is, there just is no other choice. Sir, when are we going to stop being the effects of recovery? Well, you got to wait till October 1st before the tax begins, <laughs> cut begins. <laughs> and uh, so we... We have to wait till that money begins showing up in the, in the private sector and being returned to investment. And uh, you have to wait until the end of the next fiscal year for, or during the fiscal year for the effect of the lower government spending. But I think that those things together, there's no one promised this is instant. Uh, I think that we're going to have to wait till we actually feel the effect of those things that have been adopted and going into action. On the other hand, I do think <coughs> that there is an immediate uh, kind of psychological thing that is happening among the people that will have some effect. President, First President, do you think that the country will be seriously harmed by this walkout in terms of, uh, you know, so few really experienced air controllers on the job now? Well, as I say, if, if we're up already to 75% of normal air traffic uh, on a under the present situation, I, I think this is an indication that we're not faced with disaster, but I still think that if those people would recognize that uh, their responsibility, uh, not only in their personal oath, but in obeying the law, uh, there's still some time today for more of them to come back to work. Thank you. You're not worried about flying tomorrow. What? You're not worried about flying tomorrow. <laughs> For an old ex-horse cavalryman, I'm always worried about flying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.